Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Sargent number 11 G04. This happens to be a 23 31 28 60. We're going to talk about those prefixes in the world of Sargent. They're, everything's a prefix with Sargent. Can't say everything is, but that's how Sargent rolls. And when you start you know, if you're like most people in the door industry, Sargent is a frightening. There's two types of people in the door industry. Those that are intimidated by Sargent and then those that have complete mastery over it. But I think going from A to B is not impossible. Um, even if you don't deal with it all the time. I don't, but I deal with it daily enough to reinforce. It's a SPAR, S-P-A-R. That is what I would call an engineering special. This is an engineering special. Whether it be Yale or Sargent, probably... Corbin Russell and others. If it's a, if it is an item that you need that is not otherwise accounted for in the literature, it's going to be an engineering request. It's going to be a spar. This is definitely a spar, and I'll explain why. It's an L lever. Pardon me. It's an L rose, an L lever. It's an O4 function. It's a G. That means guarded, so we know that it has a deadlocking latch bolt, and it's an 11 series. It's in satin chrome. One inch and a quarter. Now that is, I know what that means. That means that the strike plate is inch and a quarter. But Sargent made a mistake in shipping this order. It's not what I asked for. The spar part of this is that it is a lock for a two and three quarter inch thick door. And the lock is unequally extended. The lock is centered in the inch and three quarter thick door. And then they've added one inch of fabric or some sort of panel on the outside. So it's a two and three quarter inch thick door, except that the lock is installed in the center of the inch and three quarter thick original door after before they applied the one inch paneling to it. And I may have some pictures to show you. So let's pause this video. Let's look at all of the parts, and then we'll talk about what this is going to be used for. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Let's do a visual tour of all the parts. So first of all, what you're going to find um, right away when you open the box is going to be this really unusual assembly. Maybe unusual to some people. Unusual maybe to people who aren't familiar with uh, the way that Sargent does locks. I remember the first time I saw this latch bolt into the chassis, I had I was stupefied as to how it, how this worked. I had, to that point, been only familiar with um, the chassis, retracting hub, Schlage, Arrow, you know, every other manufacturer's type of lock assembly. And I actually had, I was on a job, a, a good customer of mine that did a lot of condo work for, call, said, I need you to go over to my house now and rekey my locks. I said, sure, I'll go do it. Well, I got over there, it was all Sergeant 8 line, and I had no idea how to disassemble the lock. I had... Pulling the everything else, everything was foreign to me, um, and that was specifically how to get the cylinder out of off the stem, a pin sort of concept. Like I said, I called a locksmith friend of mine. He's like, "Oh yeah, no, here's what you have to do." So then I knew. Well, same thing with holding this latch bolt inside. There's there's more to this than it seems. Um, now you might notice that this seems odd, and it's again, it's because this is a. This, is, this order is a right-hand reverse, so that door swings towards you like this. We do have one inch added out here, and that does appear to be perfectly accurate with how they've built that. Okay. Now, what you're going to need to figure out is how in the world you're going to get that latch bolt out, but let's go through the rest of the parts first. Now, the other thing that you might notice is that latch bolt looks awfully long. Well, that's, that's one of the prefixes on this part number, and we're going to look at that. Let's go through the rest of the item, uh, the tour of the physical items. Got a couple of roses, okay? Got a couple of threaded collars that are going to hold the roses on. We're going to go over the installation instructions. We've got the outside lever, the L lever. That's one of the prefixes. This is a um, large format interchangeable core, Sargent's. That's the inside lever. This is an O4 function. Okay, that's got a just a plastic construction core. You can operate the lock with the plastic construction core to really um, make sure that it works. 
once you've installed the lock before the permanent core is put in. Oh, you know what? That's small format. That's not, uh, this isn't Sargent. This is small format. Now here is where the mistake is. 114 on the box. Center line of the screw hole to the edge of the lip is inch and a quarter. That's what that means. I asked them to give me two and a quarter, and that's because that door is a right-hand reverse bevel. So from your perspective, the door is like this. We got one inch added out here. That strike lip is going to have to get out, get out um, longer. Okay, and they sent the standard strike lip. This client might be re. This might be. I believe this to be a replacement lock, and they're probably not going to change the strike plate anyway. Um, so I'm waiting for the client to confirm that. But regardless, this is the wrong strike. We need to have two and a quarter center line of the screw hole to the edge of the lip because of that one inch added uh, um, thickness on the secured side of the door, the side with the key. So, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, you're going to get your box wrench, your spanner, your spanner end, your box uh, end to be able to tighten your threaded collars, tighten your roses. You're going to get your screws that you'll need for the latch bolt and the strike. You're going to get a uh, Allen wrench that you will use to tighten your lever trim on. This Allen wrench, which I have here, is not part of this lock. That does not belong there. You're going to get a template and installation instructions. Now, let's talk about exactly how we come up with this weird door thickness and, and why it applies to not only a board lock like this or cylindrical, but mortise locks as well. Let's do that. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. Okay, let's just talk briefly about the extended concept of locks. So this lock is what I've done with, for the factories, I've declared the door thickness, and you're going to declare the door thickness for whatever you're working on. Then the factory needs to know, is the lock centered in the edge of the door, in the center of the thickness, or is it offset or biased towards one side? Okay. Um, if it's biased towards one side, they have to somehow know that. Uh, and giving them a simple dimension as to what that bias might be uh, is just something that you could relate. You might say, you know, I've got a three, I've got a three and three eighths inch thick door and we're, it's going to be centered unequally and from the secured side of the door, meaning the keyed side, you know, or if you're going to use the outside of the door as terminology, you have to define, you know, the handing of the door is going to dictate what the outside is. So if you have a, um, you know, a right-hand door, the outside is going to be the push side. If you have a right-hand reverse door, the outside of the door is going to be the pull side. Um, doesn't necessarily change what you would do in either instance, but you have to declare what that side is. So th the way that I encounter this, and it's mostly with mortise locks, is that the client's taking an otherwise standard door and then doing something to it, and that was the case here. The client had an otherwise standard inch and three quarter thick door, but they were adding, trying to move my thumb out, one inch out here. So all I had to do was tell the tell the factory, we've got a two and a quarter inch thick door, but it's an inch and three quarter thick door with a one inch panel applied to the secured side of the door. So now they know, oh, we're going to center it that thickness. We need to add one inch for the appropriate parts. And in this case, it's going to be obviously the chassis. One inch extra material out here. But because it's a because it's a right hand reverse swings out and not a right hand, um, that will affect the lip length. Okay? Because this is a right hand reverse, we need to have that one inch added to the lip length as well because it's it's basically assumed if you're adding one inch to the face of the door you're obviously doing something to the frame as well to make that flush so that lip has got to project out far enough for that to work um, 
when it comes to mortise locks, I approach it with the same logic. Where is the lock body in relationship to the overall thickness? And what are we doing if it's not centered equally? When it's not centered equally, and if you're familiar with mortise locks, you can think to yourself, okay, I'm gonna need a longer spindle on one side. If it's a two and three quarter inch thick door with one inch panel applied to the, out, to the secured side, the keyed side, and it's a right hand reverse. On the inside, you're gonna need a standard thumb turn. Nothing different about that, if it's a thumb turn function. For the screws and the spindle on the inside trim, just regular material, because all it's seeing is inch and three quarter to its outside edge, so seven eighths. It's seeing a normal dimension. But now on the secured side, or the pole side of the opening, you're gonna need that longer lift length, you're gonna need a longer spindle, you're gonna need longer fasteners, most likely, or longer mounting posts, you're gonna need a longer cylinder as well, okay? So when I told the factory that I needed a 28 is the sergeant part number for, this is a 28, this is a 28 strike. It's assumed, unless you specify, that it's inch and a quarter. And that's what that inch and a quarter is on the box. But I called out two and a quarter, so there's an error somewhere. Um, and that's how you do that. I want a 28, I want a 28, and then the dimension when it's other than standard. So that's how that is all handled. And in the business that we're in, I deal with, this is a, this is a hospital, this is a hospital, uh, several time zones, um, behind us in time or it's a woodworking shop they deal with unusual stuff there's a high-end watchmaker that has a boutique store in Boston and there were a half a dozen of these locks that were all unusual um, centerings and it's because the treatment that was being done on the doors and the hand of the doors was all different all of that stuff was a spar uh, an engineering specialty Yale uh, those were all Yale locks a sister company the sergeant um, so now let's 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 get into just some physical demonstration of the lock just to show you quickly how you might manipulate this type of lock. If you've made it this far into this video, you must be determined to see it through to the end and we appreciate your hanging in there with us and watching this entire video. It means a lot. It takes a lot of work to create these videos in the sense that um, you know, it's time taken away from doing other things. However, the advantage for me personally of creating these videos is the fact that it does allow myself to either learn about something new, to uh, reacquaint myself with something, or to reinforce what I believe that I already know. Any comments that you might leave down below would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Let's just take a quick tour of the unusual componentry of this type of lock. So the bottom line is when it comes out of the box, the latch bolt's captive. Okay, what do I do? Well. There's a pin in here that you need to remove your um, the inside the outside sleeve assembly is what it's called, and in order to do that, you'll rotate this threaded collar, and you'll be able to pull that out. Now, I had a devil of a time pulling that out. I, in fact, I couldn't get it out at all. And I called the factory, and quite honestly, the factory was stymied. They were, they were saying, that should just come right out. Well, so in exploring this lock, I removed the inside cylinder assembly. Now, no worries about putting this back together. There's a dimple that's here. It only occurs in one place of the circumference. That dimple needs to be towards the latch bolt. It needs to be the same face as here, so it's only going to go in one way. If you try to put this in the other way, well, it'll go in, but the dimple is on the wrong side. Okay, So I'm going to set that aside. And this is exactly what I encountered yesterday. I unthreaded this because what I'm trying to do is to get the latch bolt out. The latch bolt has to come out to get this installed. The pin that holds the latch bolt, you can see the head of it right there. Well, I can push on that. A little bit and now I've brought it out over here a little bit and I can get my fingertip in there and pull it out even further which I just did now the latch bolts a little loose but that pins got to come all the way well it's got to come out far enough to allow that latch bolt to come out 
the pin doesn't come out because that collar is captive there and I can't get that out. Now, the reason that Allen wrench was sitting there is, is for this reason, I'll demonstrate it, is because I took something small enough to get it down in through the hub of the latch bolt And I tapped on that, and then it came out. So something, and I'm, the gal over in tech support wasn't really sure what my problem was, but nonetheless, we at the lock bench always have a wooden hammer handle, and the wooden hammer handle is the Swiss Army knife. Sometimes things just need to be motivated. I didn't have my wooden hammer handle here, so I used the rubber side of that screwdriver. Now that pin will come out. You can take it all the way out if you want. The point being is now your latch bolt will come out. Now that should strike you as an unusual latch bolt. And it is. And it's because of its back set. Edge of the door to the center of the hole is three and three quarter. This is a three and three quarter latch. That's one of the prefixes uh, that is in the part number. Um, it's not 60, it's not 28, it's one of the others. So I'm going to put that back together the way I found it. This is going to be right hand reverse. Got the long side over here. It's only going to go together one, time, one way when you're trying to do it. Got my latch bolt in. I'm going to get my pin put back in. And it takes a little bit of fishing, but it does go all the way back through. Okay. Your outside sleeve assembly, again with the dimple. Both sleeve assemblies have one pointed in the same direction as the latch. And my, out, my inside sleeve assembly, the dimple towards the latch, and my threaded collar. So if you're encountering, encountering any trouble getting this installed, you might have the same trouble I did. Um, I don't encounter that situation often at all with these locks, but every once in a while you need a tap on something. Um, you know, the installation of this is going to be extremely straightforward. That's going to... Well, we're going to look at the installation instructions. That's going to snap over there. And then your threaded collar is what's going to finish that off. That box wrench, which is here, is the tool that you use to tighten that. And the instructions are very clear about not over tightening it. You might notice that there's a hole in that collar. Okay, That's because you're going to use the spanner wrench end of this to be able to rotate that and remove it as well. A lot of people order spanner wrenches alone. It's because they need to service the locks. Um, then, of course, what's going to happen is your lever is going to go on. Uh, the dimple towards the latch bolt is towards the set screw. That goes on. And then you tighten that set screw with the included Allen wrench. And now you've got a functioning lock. So I don't deal with... 11 line or the replacement 8 line, whatever it's called now, 8X maybe, but they go together really nice. Um, they, they just really do. So I, I enjoy the understanding of how those need to work together. At this point, let's switch to the screen view and let's go over the supporting documentation. So here's the lock that we're working on and not much to see here it's, uh, except its description. I'll leave that to you to read. I've already covered it a number of times. But we've got a 23. I think what we've got here is a 23, which is the... Let's dissect it. 23, I believe, that's the 3 and 3 quarter. I happen to have the Sergeant uh, price list loaded here because that's where we find these prefixes easily. At least that's where I find them. And indeed, 23 is 3 and 3 quarter back set. So, we've got a 28. I had already said that that's the strike. That is indeed the strike. 
Um, and I can see that inch and an eighth lip length is standard. I, I now am noticing that I asked them for a size that they don't do. They should have come back to me and say, well, you want a two and an eighth or you want two and three eighths. I probably would have opted for, well, the proper thing is to determine which is more correct. And I think in this instance, uh, I may have considered a flat lip strike if they could do the right size. And I may have been thinking that the two and an eighth would also work because uh, more is is a problem. Less can be a problem, but we have to discover which it is. Um, two and three eighths wouldn't normally be a problem. It's just going to stick out a little bit further. But we're going to look at that more in depth in a moment. The 60. That is Sergeant. Oh, I'm wrong. Sar that, that's Sergeant. Uh, I said that wrong. I said small format. I am mistaken. The lobes in small format are basically the same. The lobes in large format, the bottom lobe is larger. So we are doing sergeant large format is what we're doing. 60. 11G is both our series. Part of the function, 04, is our function. And that is going to be a storeroom closet. So it's always keyed on, it's always locked on one side. And you can always get out from the opposite side. LL, uh, L rows, L lever, that's just going to be you know, also in the price book or in the in the product catalog, really, what LL looks like. That's, in my experience, the most common of trim uh, and lever design from Sargent. So I won't worry about finding that. Two and three quarter thick door, explaining how that comes about. Inch and three quarter thick hollow metal door with a one inch panel applied to the secured side of the door. Right hand reverse, that's our hand, satin chrome. Standard fastener package. I have put that there because in the process of detailing a piece of hardware, you need to indicate what fasteners. Well, Sargent doesn't have a part number for you to insert there when you want the standard fastener package. But I put it there not as a placeholder, but as a constant reminder to myself when I'm detailing a piece of hardware that I need to insert the fastener package. So I'm telling them, standard fastener package. I don't need to because they're going to send a standard fastener package. But there are times when it matters. So if it was a door closer, I could tell them the standard fastener package, and they'll do that. But what if the standard fastener package was machine screws and sex bolts, and I wanted the door to be drilled and tapped for machine screws? I would change standard fastener package to TMS for template machine screws, meaning someone's going to drill and tap holes for that hardware. So it's there as a constant reminder that we need to be correct about what we're specifying. And it's also a letter to the installer. Hey, this is what you're doing. If you can pull up the catalog and you can understand our nomenclature, this is what you're doing. And that's why it's there. Now, some photographs. Here's the box and its label. That's immediately what you see when you open up the box. That's the contents. Even though I don't have the strike plate shown there, the strike plate is included. I'll have an added image pulled up for that. There's your chassis, the business end. Just different perspectives on it. Our lever catch button is here. That's the outside. Your latch bolt has your UL on it. That means that this is permissible for use on fire rated doors. The opposite side, your two levers, Sar showing the, the Sargent large format interchangeable core, your roses and your threaded collars, your accessory hardware. the wrench and the screw package. And I'll show you a picture of that strike in a moment, but let me show you the actual application of where this item came out of. This client stuck the tape measure through the door, showing us that it's 
you know, two and three quarter, and it's been confirmed. But here's this odd looking door. It does, you know, if you notice it, it does appear to be much further back than a standard latch bolt would be. That's showing the egress side. Now that's showing our door edge. It's hard, we can't really tell that it's two and three quarter because of how that's taken. But this is the point. We've got one inch of something, something happening here. And determining that it was one inch was done with the client actually measuring it. So that's how we knew that, not just looking at pictures. So the fact that they sent the wrong strike plate actually in this case doesn't matter because the correct strike plate would not have worked anyway. The correct strike plate, and that is my mistake actually, would have been a 7 8 flat lip. That would have been the right strike plate to use for this. Because, I mean, the client's probably going to use the strike they have and, and leave it. Or they're going to have to take the standard strike and, and cut it down, cut the lip down. So let me tell you what I mean by 7 8 lip length. I'm going to pull up the Sargent catalog. Um, okay, this is not going to work. I would probably need to reach out to the manufacturer for a part number for the proper strike. Uh, well, it might be in there, but let me, in the interest of saving time, Sergeant in their mortise locks, I believe show the strike that I'm referring to. Well, they don't, but it can be ordered. So basically what we want is a flat lip strike that's 7 eighths, because 7 eighths is half of inch and three quarter, which means that that lip is going to come right to the edge of the frame. That would have been the right way to have done this for this application, a flat lip strike. That's what I should have done. Um, this lock works perfectly for, you know, this application because they're, I'm sure that they won't be changing the strike anyway, but the correct strike would have been what I just said. Or it would have been a two and a quarter inch lip is what it should have been. But no matter what, the strike I specified and the strike that was included are not appropriate for this because this is clearly acting as some overlapping scenario. All this material that's on the outside. At least I believe that it is. It's hard to say because I don't see a cross-section of the door. It appears, well, you know what, maybe it's not. That just might be two and three quarter thick. It appeared to be some sort of an overlap. Um, so now I'm not exactly sure. Here it makes me feel as if there's an overlap, but just because the way that this shadow falls, and what I mean, what I'm saying by that is, you know, I'm not sure if the door is just unusually thick or if the door is actually constructed like that. I'm not sure which it is. I initially thought it was this, but looking at the photographs again, I could be wrong. So that's where all that goes. And this is the actual application. So now let's move through all of the different documents that are associated with this product. As we continue to look at our item here, let's look at the, there are links below this video. We're just going to take a look at them in no particular order. Uh, okay, so we have template. Uh, this template is going to be obviously everything you need to know about prepping the door for the lock and hardware. Um, if you're doing a wood door, you can easily drill that two and an eighth inch hole at the proper back set. Um, 
You'll note the half circles at 9 and 3 o'clock. If you're doing a, a hollow metal door, the door will already be prepped for that, assuming it's a factory 161 prep. If it's a wood door, you don't need to prep that because the small little tangs that are underneath the rows will sink down into the face of the door, and it's there to prevent spinning. And you can see a reference to it right here and right here. So a really simple and straightforward document. Uh, maybe a little too simple and straightforward. They don't directly show you the edge prep, even though they give you the size of the width of the latch, inch and an eighth, and then two and a quarter. And then, of course, back set C chart. Back set measured from center line of lock front. They mean the center line of the lock front. Um, what that means is we've got four door edges here square, radius, uh, rabbited, and beveled. Backside is measured from the center of the lock front. That's generally the center of the thickness of the door. You can see. If I measure, in this case, three and three quarter over from the edge of a square edge door, I'm going to come up with the same dimension. Well, I try that trick on a beveled edge door, I'm going to get a real different dimension. It's not going to be in line. So be mindful. It's from the center of the lock front. I've said in the past it's the center of the edge of the door um, because then that makes it not dependent on the thickness of the door. Um, so back set's going to be based on the center of the lock front. In our case, you know, we've got a thicker door. So the back set's measured here, not the center of the thickness of the door. Uh, and then after that, there's not much else, I guess, to really... S well, you know what? There really is. Um, two and three quarter, three and three quarter, five inch. I am not aware of a two and three eighths. It's, I don't believe it's called out in the catalog at all, and it likely isn't available. I don't see where they're telling us the bore diameter inside of here. It's going to be one inch. Yeah, well, they do. It's right here, one inch. Self-adjusting front flat. So what that means is the face plate of the latch bolt is going to float. It's going to, it's going to rotate back and forth. That will account for square edge or beveled edge doors. So there, and I'm voice recording this for some reason, So there's our template. Then we have the product catalog, and that's here. And I won't go over this in detail. There's just, you can do that. Um, that's what your lock looks like. I think it's a smart looking lock with the real thin rosette. I like that look, less obtrusive. Sergeant has a, a line of products that are neat and, and smart to the face of the door. Talk about different um, components that make up the lock. The different specifications, the range of thicknesses that it can be done with, and indeed back set two and three eighths is missing from from here. Other details that you can review. It's going to come with an LA keyway standard if you just order a conventional cylinder without defining a keyway. Shows you an exploded view, really easy to put to put together. Latch bolt's going to, uh, pardon me, the, the lock body's going to go in the door first. The latch bolt's going to go in. Your pin's going to hold it. Your drive sleeves have to be removed because you need to do that to get the pin through. You'll thread, the, you'll install the drive sleeves. You'll tighten them down. Then your roses, your threaded collars, and then your trim. I think we just went over the instructions right there. Windstorm certifications here in Southern Florida. It's a fact of life. It's an everyday concern. STC 55. This can be used on a ST 50, uh, STC 55. That's a pretty high STC rating. And, you know, you start to approach STC 55. There's, you know, and Beco can do STC 59. But after that, there's, I don't think there's anything in builder's hardware that can be done. Uh, so it's approved for use on doors up to STC 55. Now here comes the functions. When it comes to cylindrical locks, you're not going to have nearly the available 
quantity of different functions that you would have in mortise locks. But the basics are most definitely going to be covered, most certainly by Sargent. So the with Sargent, and again, I'm, no, I'm not an expert, but you're going to have the series, and then it'll be either G or U. If you've got a deadlocking latch bolt, it'll be G. Doesn't mean it's keyed, because you can have an exit function that's got a, a, a deadlocking latch bolt. That will be guarded, is what that stands for. It'll give you the deadlocking tab. And then you'll have the function after it. So to prove the point, we can get to a non-keyed function or a non-guarded function, like a passage, you'll see U. And you'll note the G has a deadlocking tab, the U does not. And you'll note that a exit or communicating lock, um, no key, but is guarded. So that's what I was referring to earlier. So what is it, two pages of functions? Yeah, not much when you're dealing with cylindrical locks. Mortise locks will have six pages of functions. So as we continue to slide down um, this function conversion chart, I'm just going to, you know, that's just a parts diagram that's nice to have. When you're specking out the lock, this is a nice page to have because it will give you an idea of what the strike plates look like. Um, and then, you, of course, your designs. We are, as you have probably heard me say several times, doing an L, L. So we've got an L lever. They don't show it all together. Well, they kind of do. Uh, an L lever with an L rose. They don't show every possible design together, apparently. They've got uh, four roses, four different levers. So no reason to have 16 different pictures. You can get the concept, I suppose, of what it looks like. Um, and there you go. What you'll notice is the O rows, two and three quarter diameter, the L, uh, the L rows, three and a half, the larger diameter. Okay. It's pretty distinguishable to, to look at a sergeant lock with that real flat rows and the two and three quarter diameter. It's just, it's noticeably smaller. Latch assemblies are giving you part numbers. This is really nice to have in a catalog because. I have a client with an 11 G04, and the latch bolt is broken, and it's two and th it's three and three quarter back set. Um, I'm able to determine what part they need once I know the function. So I know that that latch bolt in the box is an 11 2113 because it's an 04 function, and it's three and three quarter. I've got a T strike here. The references to the other part numbers for the strike, curve lip strikes. And th this is where, and this is where the error that I uh, made on the order when I asked for the strike, inch and three eighths to two to two and seven eighths in quarter inch increments. So inch and five eighths, inch and seven eighths, two and one eighth, two and three eighths. They won't do two and a quarter. So that was my mistake. And it's, it's listed right there. That's that's points off the exam. References to cylinders. Obviously, we are doing the 60, which is the um, large format. Sixty-three hundred Sargent removable core. Uh, they list <clears throat> their different keying systems that they can do as well. Competitor keyways, Schlage material. Ah, here it is. I usually use the price list because I know where to find it, but this is nice because it shows the mechanical options prefix-wise for only this lock. You don't have to look at the price list. Well, this is a condensed version of it when it comes to, you're not going to see keying options here, just the mechanical options of it. You won't see, um, th that's my point, you're, you're not going to see every possible option. And again, that strike list is listed there. Cylinder options. Degree is a very common uh, system, a keying system by uh, Sargent. You will notice, if you study that, you'll notice some similarities to Medico. I, don't, I, I doubt that's by coincidence. They are sister companies. More cylinder options here as well. That's the tool that comes in the box. 
list of uh, finishes, and then the how to order. Sargent does a really great job uh, in their catalog. They, they just simply do. Suggested specifications are here for that lock. If you wanted to convey to someone what you expected on a project, you could literally copy and paste that when you want to use Sargent, or, or you're going to include Sargent in an open specification. All right, now the next document will be cylinder work, and that's important on this lock because we are working with a removable core. Well, we're working with an interchangeable core. Removable core is the wrong term to use. That means something different. There is going to be language about how that, um, how your cam driver needs to be set. And it literally needs to be set like they're showing here. When this lock arrived to me, my cam orientation was exactly how I need. When I'm looking down into the outer sleeve assembly, this is the lever catch pin. There isn't one on the inside. Um, that outside lever is held on by its set screw in the dimple, its set screw here and the lever catch pin. And that's why you may not have noticed, but there's a hole on the inside of the lever, on the inside of the press catch right here. It's inside here. So it's held on on two points. Um, but the cam needs to be in this orientation for it to work correctly. So that's why this document is here. It shows you how that must be. Otherwise, the core is not going to go in. And if you get it in, it may not operate correctly because you have it, you know, you've turned something the wrong way. Then we have the installation instructions. And what I really find is that the exploded parts view basically tells me everything I need to know about it. And generally, is it, when it's an extremely elegant lock, it is exactly how it goes together. And you put the parts together like this. They do list a, or include a template here. This is, uh, you have to be mindful of that. Uh, what ought to have happened is they ought to have included a template for the back set. They didn't. This is a, uh, a multi-use uh, template, so be careful of what you're working on, uh, where you're going to drill. Just read the template. We sell a lot of blank dummy mortise cylinders because cylinders are put on the wrong side of the door. Mark your hole and drill it, steps one and two. Do your strike preparation uh, would be the next thing they want you to do. Now they have, uh, Asa Aboy does a really good job, and I forget the platform that they use, but you can scan that QR, uh, QR code and they're gonna, up, up is gonna come a video of installing this. Um, that's pretty nice. Now us as distributors, I don't have many at all installation videos because my purpose in this is to familiarize you with the product, uh, not necessarily to teach you how to install it. I'd like to have that time, I just don't. So lock this assembly. You've got to take that latch bolt out because it's coming from the factory. Collar comes off, the threaded collar, the sleeve comes out, the, the pin comes out, the latch bolt comes out. Then chassis goes in first, latch bolt, pin. And back to these videos, I, I have seen uh, some of them and they're great is the bottom line. Asa Abloy has a heap full of them as far as I know. And here is, they're talking about their sleeve assembly. Um, and this lock does not have color-coded driver tips at all. Um, so we'll skip over that section in the sense that if you do, read this section. Uh, and here as well, step seven um, allows you to start to get everything installed past the point where we were. Your sleeve assemblies go in. As I had demonstrated earlier, the dimples need to be towards the latch bolts. With driver tips aligned, insert outside sleeve first. Dimple must face door edge. Thread collar by hand. Tighten to, tighten to bearing assembly with wrench. If excessive wrench torque is required, stop and check alignment of driver tips. You shouldn't have to be fighting it, is what that means. Cam orientation, again, uh, this is what you're looking at. This is the one we're dealing with for our lock. 
or 60 prefects. If you've got a conventional cylinder, it's this way, the opposite way. The rose installation is really simple. Slide rows over sleeves, aligning tabs on rows with slots on bearing assembly, meaning it's really only going to go on one way for you. And then with your spanner wrench is how you'll go about getting the rosettes or the threaded collars down on. Uh, roses go on, they're aligned properly, the rosettes or the threaded collars are tightened. Uh, then at that point it's just getting your trim on. Which is simple and straightforward. The included Allen wrench, the set screws are already in the stems. Install and tighten. Make sure the lock works. Okay. They talk about cylinder removal here, which is a very common procedure. Not every lock is the same, but this appears to be like most others. And that's that. Now, there is a link below this video as seen here to the manufacturer's page. And from here, you can pull up not only all of the Sargent products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation as seen here, but you can also see a link to the manufacturer's website and the current product catalog, as well as some very old archival catalogs that I have. 1877, 1888, 1901, 1927, 1936 for padlock catalog revision. If you want to see what Sargent was doing in the early part of the 20th century, there are some archival catalogs there. There are other encyclopedic documents that are here. Uh, for Sargent, I would refer you to Basic Technical Fundamentals of Builders Hardware, just a Hardware 101. And if you're within the industry within a couple of years, I would, depending on what track you're on, I would suggest that you possibly review that. You'll find it very enlightening. There is the 6300 removable core keying and assembly manual. If you're going to perform locksmithing on Sargent 6300, you will absolutely want to review that document. It'll be how you learn to go about doing it. Okay. Signature series key manual. Studying locksmithing myself on the respective manufacturer's pages is where I, I place my reference documents. So everything that I personally have ever acquired for Sargent is here. Parts manuals are here as well, etc. Let's wrap up this video on camera. In conclusion, the name Sargent is synonymous with exceptional quality building products. I am a fan of their product line. Um, because I personally believe in how well built it is. I also am a true believer in their tech support department. I have had uh, nothing but positive experience with them. I've even been sitting in a DHI class and have live chatted them for help. I was in one, I may have mentioned, um, last week. And I was detailing a pair of concealed vertical rod sergeant exit devices. They were AD devices, I forget what we were doing, 8610s maybe. And I needed to know what cylinder to use for outside key control. And I knew it was a mortise cylinder, because it is. It's concealed vertical rod. But I said, well, I've got the catalog. It didn't tell me what cylinder to use. And if it did, I missed it. So I reached out to them. And while I was sitting in that exam prep class, they responded right back to me. And I said, thank you very much. You just helped me not get that wrong. So they're really great in that regard. The gal I talked to yesterday about helping me uh, get that sleeve assembly off, needing to tap it out, extremely helpful. On the phone, rummaging through parts, trying to duplicate it. Uh, just a great group. Um, and it's extremely uh, a, a, an inseparable part of the Sargent product line uh, in having that great tech support. So to them for that, I say thank you. Any questions on the 11 g 4 this funny lock for a weird door thickness, or any other Sargent product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.